You're listening to Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon. Hey, what's up, world? It's Brandon. And this is Alex. And we're filmmakers. And we're drinking whiskey. Ah, <laughs> whiskey, huh? It is. It's a special day, man. How it's, did that uh, happen? St. Patrick's Day today. Oh, that's why everybody's got green on. Exactly. So by the time you're hearing this, it will have been yesterday. But as we're recording, it is currently St. Patrick's Day. It's currently today. Today. Yes. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> it is always today on FDB. It is. No matter what day it is, it's today. Yeah, man. So anyway, we're drinking. Well, cheers. Let's cheer do, let's clink this All right. thing. Let's Here cheers we go. it. Which, by the way, I don't. I've never had Jameson on the rocks. Okay. Cheers. Try it. Mmm. College. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bourbon. It's no. not the sweetness and the it's not the beautiful flavors of the Kentucky-born sexy drink of choice. Mm. But it's. It's not bad. It's not bad. But either way. It like makes for, me feel like that guy. Who's the guy, on the ultimate huh. fighter? Uh, With the beard, the McGregor? Oh, uh, McGregor. Yeah. Uh, is it McGregor? McGregor. Connor. Connor. Ma- Connor McGregor. Yeah. I want to fight somebody right now. You, you shouldn't do that because <laughs> I'm the only person in this room with you. <laughs> so either way, like Brandon said, we are drinking Jameson Irish whiskey, triple distilled, a blend Matured and bottled in Ireland. Nice. Speaking of Jameson. Ireland, yeah. Is it Jameson that they've been doing? No, it's not. Oh, sorry. What? I don't think it's Jameson. What? I'm thinking of awesome commercials. The rain one? I'm thinking of Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Yeah. Keep walking. Keep walking. No, that's not, not that, this. Not that Jameson doesn't have good commercials. I'm sure they do. But the, I can't think of one the, the Johnny head, Walker though. commercials are pretty amazing. Yeah. And one that uh, our good buddy here... At Sound Images, Adam Plyman just referenced was the Tullamore Dew commercial, where they're drinking and singing in like a graveyard, and you think they're going to a funeral, and then it's like raining and it's super dramatic, and all of a sudden, the dude's bride to be pops out behind them, and they're saying goodbye. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway. Wow. James. So many memories. Uh huh. So many spirits. Oh, here you go. Fun fact. <laughs> John Jameson founded his distillery in Dublin in 1780. Nice. You know I'm Irish. Are you? Ferris. I only spell it with one R. Most Irishmen and women spell it with two R's. Yeah. For a minute, I thought I was Lebanese. I thought you were French. No, I thought I was- Fari. Le- no, I thought I was Lebanese. Uh, the In Lebanon, Ferris, F-A-R-I-S, or yeah. F- Faris or whatever, is a, like a powerful king. Really? It's like a lineage of kings. So I got really <laughs> excited- I got really excited. Um, Heir to the throne. Well, yeah, kind of. Uh, we had a, a random lady show up to a family reunion, and she was Middle Eastern, and said that she was related to us. Wow! And that no one really knows where she came from. And we looked into it, and I decided I got excited because Lebanon's pretty awesome. It's like the Paris of the Middle East. Okay. And I was like, oh man, this this is awesome. This is really cool. Yeah. I uh, decided to do family tree DNA. They sent me a swab. Mm-hmm. I send off my DNA. Comes back, not Lebanese. Wow. But isn't it amazing that you can do that? Yeah, I'm an Irish, and uh, basically I'm Irish, and from my mom's side, I'm a little uh, English. So you're not a king? Not a king. I'm a pauper. You're a king in my world, bro. I'm like a, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like a poor kid scrapping up the potato farm... Wasn't there a thing there with potatoes? Yeah, it was the like a whole Irish deal. Potato famine. Yeah, that whole thing. <laughs> I'm like scrapping up potato skins. Yeah, they like lived on like potato yeah. scraps and Jameson. There's nothing king like about me. Nice. Anyways, what about you? Where pretty, are you from? Pretty kingly. Where are you from? I am Polish, nice. Dutch, German, Native American. Sweet. Yeah. Cool man. Creek Indian. From... We're we're a multicultural podcast. We are. Hi, <laughs> hi. We are nice. So, speaking of uh, St. Patrick's Day, you got like a St. Patrick's Day playlist dialed up uh, at home uh, on Netflix. Are you going to watch any? Uh, Absolutely not. St. Patty's Day movies or anything? Absolutely not. No, nothing. No. Uh-uh. Are there any St. Patty's Day movies? Uh, I don't there's a couple. Know. What about that? Uh, there was a great film. Um, man, back in the day in college, it came out. It was um, 
It's this a guy in Ireland who wins the lottery, but then he like dies. I think. I've never heard of that. Oh man. Really? It's gonna come to me. Sorry. Why would I bring it up if I can't think of it? Well, either way, today you should oh. probably just watch. Go watch Boondock Saints. Yeah, there you go. There's a recommendation. Yeah. Just go watch Boondock Saints. The whole series. Pour yourself a glass of Jameson. The whole series. There's a series. Well, there's, there's like a second and a third. I didn't know that. Oh there's yeah. One. No. Why would you ever sequel that? Oh, it's great. The it's second probably, one's awesome. It's probably terrible. No, it's awesome. And by awesome, you mean terrible. No. Really cool. Okay. Well, so. Sean Patrick something. Something or another. Yeah. But Did, seriously, what have you been watching? What have I been watching? Uh, I don't know. Lots of stuff. Oh, dude. House of Cards. Obviously. So, so good. Yeah, last week we uh, kind of talked wow. about it a little bit, and we wrote a pod or a, a blog about it. But, yeah, we're so super into that, and it's getting twisted. Who's your favorite character? <sighs> I've always been a Frank guy, but... I love Frank. Dude, right? he's, he's amazing. I um, love Frank. But I also love Claire's underhandedness and twisty bits. Yes, and she's gorgeous. Yeah, and, um, um, oh, what's his name? His secret security... Doug Stamper? No, no. He's awesome. Meacham? Meacham. Meacham is good, I man. like Meacham. Yeah, Meacham's good. He doesn't say much, but he's he matters. Yeah. Yeah. Meacham. He's a part of the family. Um, even though they're a little creepy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Meacham. It's it's been a fun ride. Is it is this the last year? Cuz didn't the writer the the creator, he's left Netflix, right? Like he's no longer on it. I don't know. I hope not. I think. I don't know. I, I did realize, though, uh, we were watching one of the episodes this season, and uh, it was directed and executive produced by Robin Wright. Yeah. Pretty cool. She's a boss, dude. Yeah. That's what happens. When you act long, when you're in the game long enough, you just so cross the over. cream rises to the top. You just cross over. Yeah. She, uh, by the way, <laughs> uh, Kristen looked the somebody posted a meme on Facebook. She was uh, Princess Buttercup in, um, oh. A, what's the the movie Princess Bride? Oh, really? Yeah, she was also Princess uh, Bride. She was also Jenny in Forrest Gump, right? Yeah. Uh, was she? I think so. All I know is Princess Bride. Yeah, like what? All I know is she's she's amazing. Yeah. She's awesome in she that. Chopped off her hair. She, oh, she looks amazing. Yeah. Um, her dresses are always so like perfect. Yeah. Like it just it's such like it's almost like her wardrobe is such a part of her character. It is. It well, really it, is. Like more so than any TV. You know what I mean? Like it's an extension of her character. Like it's very much who she is. Well, it's like a symbol of her defiance mm-hmm. also. There yeah. there are a few. I mean, especially in this season, there's some stuff that ties into that. Right. But, but Frank Frank can wear whatever he wants. He's still a badass. He's still Frank. But she has to <laughs> wear the perfect outfits. Even her running outfits are like perfect. Because <laughs> she's rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, all right. That's an, uh, what else? Uh, over at our house, we've been watching House Cards. Really? What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, that's the leading uh, the leading show. Um, so I don't know. I, we've uh, yeah, that's really all we've been watching right now. Nice. Is that it? Have you gone to the movies at all? Or? No, no. I need to. Yeah. I don't know. Is there, I've, I've heard a lot of people really liked Brooklyn. That's on my list. Too. Yeah, I didn't see that. Still a lot of you know Oscar stuff. I still want to see. I know. I still want to see, see, see Spotlight. Although I saw one of our um, one of our friends. I have to look it up. One <laughs> I of our, saw it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking. One about. of our friends pointed out and said um, that he felt like Spotlight looked like an amateur student film. Yeah, which I had to disagree with. And yeah. I so now I'm even more intrigued to watch it. Yeah, but so. again, somebody else posted on there that it wasn't about the cinematography. That you know. The cinematography was just there to to put it up on screen, and it was about the story and the characters. Yes. And if it would have looked beautiful, it would have taken away from the content. So yeah, I get that. There's a time and a place for beautiful photography, and there's a time and a place to just tell the story, show it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Speaking of telling the story, anything cool happening? Any uh, you got any stories from the set? Tales from the crew? Tales from the crypt. Um, Oh, wait a second. Yeah. You got a story. What's up? You just had a movie premiere. I did. That I didn't go come to. It's fine. I feel bad. No, it's okay. Uh, there, will be, there will be more. There'll be more. Especially one that we worked on together. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so tell, tell us about that. So Eddie and- Eddie and Daniel and Siri. Daniel and Siri premiered in Columbus. At the Gateway. Yep. Yeah. Uh, How was that? Was it this awesome? Tuesday, like a few days ago. Uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, it was cool to see something I'd shot up on like legitimate big screen. 
like a, yeah. a movie the screen, screen. yeah cool. like with an actual cinema projector and awesome. you know we had a dcp digital cinema package made and it, it was great it looked, it looked really cool that's fun yeah so we we premiered them uh the directors introduced them and then we did a little q a afterwards People had all sorts of questions. How did the uh, how did the audience react? Some of those are they're kind of dark. <laughs> they're dark and twisty. Uh, so there was I, I imagine there probably wasn't like cheers. No, there was a lot of a lot of cheers. Well, like, I mean, like yeah. during the film or like no, it was, <laughs> yes, it was people going uh, <laughs> either what's going on or wow that just happened. Yeah, um, they're like hmm. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me of my failing marriage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, well, we had a cool surprise. So, uh, Daniel Montesano, uh, one of the Daniel from Daniel and Siri, um, came down from Queens. I believe he's from Queens. He's from New York. He came down. He drove down and stayed with the director and came to the premiere. It's pretty awesome. Sweet. So yeah, he was there, and I was talking to him afterwards, and he goes, "Man." Uh, you know, I read the script, but this is the first time I've seen it. I didn't realize how heavy this film is. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. It's dark. Yeah, that's interesting. So it was cool. We got to talk to people and uh, discuss the process and the cinematography and, yeah, a lot of good questions. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I I wanted to come. I played my cards with the weather. Oh, it's all good. I felt bad. Yeah, I drove home. I got home at like 2 in the morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to do that. Um, but- it was good overall. Yeah. Very good. We had like forty five, fifty people there, so That's nice. Awesome. It was a nice turnout. Yeah, That's half awesome. the theater theater film. That's great. Well, I have something for you. <laughs> really, I have a hard drive. Ooh, with eight hundred and sixteen gigabytes yeah. of Kill Game. There you go. On it, there should be more gigabytes of Kill Game. <laughs> so um, always. So you guys have heard us talk about Kill Game on the show, uh, our short film, and we are at a crucial point where we've got a, a cut we like a lot, and we're mm-hmm. we've tweaked it and we've pushed it far along, but things are ramping up on in my world um, enough that I just can't push it over the finish line. So uh, this is a lesson I would like to share with you listeners. Sometimes you have to let go. Sometimes, Sometimes you got to let go, and uh, but you want to do that with people you trust and you know, and so. We, uh, me and Alex decided we wanted to bring in our buddy Brad. Brad Gollowin. Gollowin, who's yeah. been on the show, a uh, great music video director, great director in general, cool dude. And I said, hey, what if uh, what if you think he'd be interested in mm-hmm. taking it across the finish line? Yeah. So I reached out to him and, uh, and he was like, showed him the cut and he goes, yeah, I'm in. Nice. Just like that. He said, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so we're going to get him a hard drive and so, yeah, so, finish it uh, up. So hopefully that's going to be happening soon, and we're going to get that thing uh, going. We're going to see what uh, our friend Adam Plyman has capacity to contribute. If he yeah. can contribute on uh, sound score or sound mixing or one of the two or both, or and then uh, we'll yeah. push it further down the line, and then uh, hopefully uh, see, see if our, uh, our buddies in the color correction world want to contribute as well, and then we'll mm-hmm. be done. We'll yeah. have a film. And then we'll have a premiere. All right. And then we'll win awards. Awesome. And then we'll be famous. <laughs> and then we'll quit this. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no that's going to happen. <laughs> so so what did you learn in that process? So you did two short films. You screened in yeah. a thing. What, is, what are the takeaways for people listening who are trying to shoot a film and screen it at their theater? Something we say a lot or we talk about a lot on the show is pre-production. Pre-production, pre-production, pre-production. Have everything planned out. Uh, just going through the process and the editing and finishing and all that jazz of any short film, especially you know some of the first ones, it becomes apparent that, hey, we didn't quite have things as planned out as we should have. Um, but yeah, just, just plan it out, I guess, is the way it should go. And have every, have every key position filled. Um, so for Daniel and Siri, um, I did a lot of my own focus pulling. So there's some issues with that <laughs> when you're operating and focusing on lighting and mm-hmm. framing and all that jazz, you should not also be pulling your own focus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pull your own focus. Exactly. Right, that's good. Unless you're shooting B-roll on a corporate thing. Sure. Then you can. All right. Otherwise don't. Nice. So that's, that's a cool, tip. Cool, man. Um, what about the screening? The screening Anything you learned from that? Great. Um, 
Not really, man. I mean, just do it. Get a film done and have have get some eyeballs on it. Like that's key. And then do another one. Nice. Which is where I'm at. All right. The another one part. Yeah, you're always on the on to the next one. Yeah, on to the next one. On to the next one. Um, cool. That's awesome. Hmm. So, yeah. Anything else in the hopper right now? Um, kind of a cool announcement, I guess. Mm. So, a music video that nice. I shot uh, a long time ago by the name of Stressed Out for a band by the name of 21 Pilots yep. um, is nominated for Best Music Video at the Alternative Press Music Awards. Sweet. Pretty cool. Yeah, so it's I'm awesome. kind of excited about that. Yeah, That's great. So, Congratulations, bud. Yeah. Mark Eshelman of Real Bear Media directed that sucker. Uh, killed it. Knocked out of the park. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's just kind of cool to be- What a good guy. There. Yeah. I'm glad that the two of you collaborated and made great things together. Yeah. Good dude. He is a good dude. He's always, uh, he's he's in the mix. He's he's chiming in on the mm-hmm. FTB podcast every now and again. Yeah, he'll retweet stuff. And- Nice. Throw out some, yeah, yeah, good guy. What about you, man? What, um, do you, uh, what do you got coming up? Man, we're blazing right now. We've got a lot of momentum. Um, Every time I talk to you, you're busy. Well, it's been, it has been busy. We're doing some things over at uh, Leap Frame and collaborating with our friends at Sound Images and Neltner Small Batch, um, mm. designer, director, creative director guy. We actually just had this really cool session, so Keith Neltner, We'll have to get him on the show. He he lives out in uh, out in the country. He's got a rural design firm. Does Nel- he like uh, Neltner Small Batch? Yeah, bourbon? oh yeah. He makes not only that he designs labels for bourbons. Nice and does really cool branding stuff. And so we we pitched on a project for a university, Universidad, um, and we were awarded the project. So we pitched it as sort of a collective, and we've hmm. got sound images. They're going to be doing some original score, sound mixing, sound design stuff, and then. Uh, Neltner helped on the ideation process. So actually yesterday, we, was, we had a lot of fun. We went out to the Neltner farm and had a morning session of just ideas. And then the client came out to sort of experience the farm. So mm-hmm. we curated many of those ideas in the barn. Like we took all of our ideas that were on this like uh, brown parchment sort of paper. Mm-hmm. And to hold all of the stickies and stuff onto the paper so it wouldn't fall off, we just took packaging tape and started like layering all of our ideation and then rolled it up into a big tube and then carried it down to the barn. Wow. And then laid it out in the barn. So here we are with like all of these like uh, designers and like fancy people who are like, you know, work for major brands. And we're all standing in a barn looking yeah. at uh, these ideas for this commercial. They are taped onto a. <laughs> it was great. It was a lot of fun. And then amazing. afterwards. Um, Something they won't forget. Yeah, he yeah. owns a little tavern. And um, after we were done, we walked over to the tavern and, and had a beer and cheers and drank some bourbon and had just some time of you know building building relationships with the team and and I think that was really cool. What I learned from that moment, kind of watching the client and sort of seeing that experience, is um, there's a lot of value in changing things up. Mm-hmm. And so you know if you're out there and you're you're a filmmaker director and you're working with your client, like you know maybe. Maybe you don't have the presentation meeting in the boardroom, but maybe you maybe you take them out to the location where you think you're going to shoot, and that's where you present your final idea. Yeah. And getting sometimes people out of their normal space, I think, allows them to think freely and allows them to not get caught up into um, the things that are uh, maybe holding them back from, from taking a chance. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. So one of the like things— it. It's a good strategy. Yeah, so that's some of the stuff that, you know— our company is trying to really push forth is this point of view of um, we really want to push clients to take chances and really make something great and not just make a video because the internet tells them they need more video. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of yeah. like what Ro- Ro- uh, Rolo was talking about from Whipster, from the Whipster episode. If you go back and listen to the Whipster episode, Whipster episode, Whipster episode um, um, there was a great conversation yeah, a there episode. about just like the future of like business films and content and really making stuff that matters versus um, doing just stuff something. just because somebody posted an article on LinkedIn about video drives 20% more traffic. <laughs> like it's not video that drives it. It's good content. Yeah. It might be a video, but if it's not good quality storytelling, it won't get you that 20%. And if it's not good quality storytelling, it might actually hurt you. 
Yeah, it could, so, be, could be the opposite. Yeah. So we're super excited. We've got like three really strong ideas um, that we're going to present, and hopefully they'll they'll pick uh, they'll pick one that you know I think everybody gets excited. I think there I can I'm excited about all three of them. Cool. That's there's important. definitely two that are in my heart. The third one's not in my heart. It's it's in my head. Mm. It makes sense. It's respectable. I will gladly make it. I will be proud of it. Yeah. But there's two that are literally in my heart right now. That you just want to do. I, yes. Nice. Yeah. So it's fun. Cool. Well, maybe we can apply that uh, same kind of breaking the mold tradition strategy to uh, other aspects of filmmaking as yeah. well, like if you're a writer, maybe instead of writing in your basement like you always do, go to a coffee shop or a field or a yeah, go yeah barn absolutely. like you, you absolutely know, or to, or go to the space where the story takes place, right? Yeah, if you're writing a gangster story set in the diner, go to the diner. Yeah, maybe or, some ideals will flow. Yeah, or go to the the smoky bar in the backwoods. Or yeah, if you're writing a you know story about the Amish, go to the Amish country. Yeah, put yourself somewhere new. Oh, I like that. That's mm. nice. It's like a personal life life uh, strategy there. It is. Are Experience you, life. Are you in a rut? <laughs> Put yourself somewhere new. Put yourself. The latest new. book from Alex. Yes. Put yourself somewhere new. <laughs> An FDB bestseller. <laughs> um, so, what are you excited about, man? Is there anything? What's what's bubbling up? We're getting a bunch of emails from NAB. Yeah. That I'm excited to go really cool. to NAB. Hopefully, I just we're going to get a, together. Uh, <laughs> An email from Adobe about like yeah. a cocktail hour. Yeah, we're party. We're gonna party with Adobe. Yeah, with uh, we're gonna the party editor. with wooden camera. Well, the editor of Deadpool, I yeah. guess, is gonna be talking at yeah. the Adobe cocktail hour. Oh and... yeah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna be hanging out with all the cool kids. Yeah, and I just talked to uh, our friends at the camera department here in Cincinnati, our local camera rental house. And they going? They're gonna be going. Yeah, we're gonna have to have some bourbons with them. Yeah, so Ben and Mal are going to be going. Uh, they said they're going to be staggering it, so we're going to have to find an overlap point nice. and all meet up. Um, That's then, fun, man. Yeah, so you know, I've talked to other people around the state, rental house-wise and production member-wise, and a lot of people are going. Yeah, so, I know. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm excited to see what new toys and gadgets they have. It's always fun. I, I haven't really heard a lot of early buzz, though, on like any like game changers. No. Like It seemed like uh-uh. like last year there was a lot. There was the Ursa Mini. There was the- Speaking of that, there was the little, I'm going to uh, stop you right there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Ursa Mini and speaking of game changers and things coming out or not coming out, so there has been a lot of backlash uh, towards directed towards uh, Black Magic for their lack of delivery sure. promptness. Yeah, um, and I guess the Ursa Mini and the Black Magic Micro are finally shipping without a key feature that they initially said was going to be in it, which is a global shutter. So they said oh, they no. couldn't deliver on the promise, and they removed the global shutter. It's now a rolling shutter. But people are getting their cameras. Can you explain to us why that matters or what's the difference? Or Yeah, so a rolling shutter uh, scans the sensor, you know, line by line, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. So if you whip pan it really fast, you'll notice that vertical lines kind of bend and sway. Mm-hmm. And if you're, like, shooting at a train window and you're going 100 miles an hour, the trees or whatever straight vertical lines will look like they're diagonal lines. Okay. A global shutter scans the entire sensor at the same time, so the lines stay straight. There's no weird artifacting sure. and blur. And so, would, like, give us an example of a camera that has a global shutter. Um, global shutter cameras would be the F55, I believe, is a global shutter camera. The F65, um, and I believe the are new... Reds global. No, or do they have a different Reds, technology. Reds are, Reds are rolling shutter. They're just a very fast rolling shutter. So they scan very, very quickly from top to bottom, and you get less of sure. the What about the Alexa? Bending. No, that's uh, uh, rolling shutter as okay. well. So rolling shutter doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. No. Right? It's just a, you know, it's more so the, hey, we promised to give you this, and we didn't deliver. Gotcha. So, you know. People love it, though. People love the black magic. They do. So we'll see. It's, I, very, it's definitely very much, um, they seem to be, like, black magic fanboys are, like, all in. They are. Yeah. So. One of the uh, DITs and colorists that I work with, uh, Chris Ratledge out there, he, he'll he tell you the story too. He was working on a film and they had an Alexa and a Black Magic. And so he took uh, two different angles from two different cameras, graded them, and brought over the DP and goes, tell me which is which. And the DP goes, ah, that's obviously the Alexa. Mm-hmm. And Chris goes, nah, that's the Black Magic. 
Hmm. So, you know, you can do, all cameras are so good nowadays that you can make them do whatever you want, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, nothing nothing new that you heard or you no, jamming? No, uh-uh. I do think that once we get there, there's going to be a lot of tech uh, and toys dedicated to the drone sure. market. I think, Speaking like we talked about. Speaking of drone. Yeah. You started it. You I fired la- it up. I launched did you crash it already? No. I now have firsthand experience. With to, the solo. Let's break this down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was, for several years, experienced with the Phantom. I had the Phantom 1, crashed it. Phantom <laughs> 2, Then I got the Phantom, Phantom 2, <laughs> crashed it. Both using GoPros. Yes. Decided I was going to try the Solo, the 3DR robotic, 3D robotics, or 3DR Solo. Solo. Yeah. Um, has a lot of really cool features, some automation, some stuff like that. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to try that. So I got it. Uh, first and foremost, packaging, design, amazing. You said it's like a BMW. Far and above, in my opinion, my experience with the Phantom feels way higher end, feels way sturdier, feels more significant of a product. Huh. Um, so that's just, I'm just keeping it real. Cool. Uh, and got it. The startup was simple. The directions were easy. Um, we well, had an issue well, initially, right? Yeah, there was one little thing. So everything worked perfect except I got this strange error about the control stick hmm. to which I hollered at 3 dr They were like, oh, you need to reach out to so-and-so. They responded, and I had to do a calibration actually using Terminal on Macintosh. And wow. I, I like had to go in, and they made it very easy. It was like step one, do this, copy and paste this. Yeah. But I had to like put code into terminal while connected on Wi-Fi to the 3DR controller. Oh my and God. like I had to do this like reprogramming of the thing, and it t- it worked fine. And so that's amazing. Yeah. So that's I good did customer support. Yeah. Though. So I did that, Prompt. and then um, we took it out, and sure enough, like it's super easy. Like you literally hold a button down, and it just takes off and hovers at about 10 feet Mm -hmm. you fly it and then you hold the button down again and it just lands and it's the most beautiful perfect landing that you'll ever do and you don't have to do anything it automatically does it it's like it's thinking it's 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 thinking by itself it's my new friend it's like an ai yeah so when does it destroy decide to destroy humanity i don't know but i that later on well the first step is to have it co-host the show with gotcha okay (laughs) and then later on it decides we're a threat (laughs) so uh but i will say i before, when we had those guys on the show, I was um, I was skeptical on the ease of use that they make it seem like, but I'm a believer. A believer. Really? I'm a believer. You're going to take a bunch of automated selfies now? Maybe. From like a thousand feet? Could be. All right. So that was really fun. We had a great day doing it, and, um, and I'm excited to mess with some of the other modes. They have an orbit mode and a cable car mode, and so I'm excited mm-hmm. to really kind of get to understand how to do it. But I'm also like... It's one of those things where you got these new drone laws, and so there's this whole thing about to register. Right? Well, if you're just flying it as a hobbyist, like I've already got that license. Like I registered it, I paid my five bucks, I got my card. So if I'm flying it on the weekends and I'm just kind of like you know training and getting better at it, like no one's going to say anything. I've done all I need to do. If I'm on set flying it for a job, then potentially, if asked, I would have to produce X, Y, or Z, which at this point, they make it really hard to do. You have to fill out like eight forms, proving your your LLC, proving you're this, proving you're that. Blah, blah. It's like it's a hot mm. mess. Interesting. They don't make it easy. Yeah, and there's all if, other rules like you if can't they fly were smart, if they were smart, they would make it super easy so they could get their money. Yeah, and they'd say, "Hey, look, here's what you got to do. You got to do these three things. We made it super easy on this super easy website." Pay me your five hundred dollars or whatever the fee is. True. And or if they made it super easy, then you'd have thousands of drones in the skies, and it would be mayhem. Not true. So, but anyway, either was, way, that's cool. It was cool, and um, so that's that's kind of fun. Yeah. So what I like about them, and we we actually had the guys from 3DR on the show, um, and they talked about their kind of open platform and the how they've released all the compatibility information and all that to other companies, and they're allowing other companies to make products specifically for the 3DR. So not just GoPro, but also other manufacturers, software developers. And the the like. So I think at NAB, we're going to start seeing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I would like to see a strong cinematic competitor to the GoPro. Yeah, like a red micro something or that, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that mounts something that's light enough mm. 
to fly on something like a 3DR or a Phantom. Yeah. But has a like a like a real lens. Yeah, you do like pancake like some, lenses like some or glass. Yeah, I mean that could be a thing too. What if you start seeing like Zeiss oh. or brands like that making drone specific lenses that are mm. like super tiny but really but they and they don't like have a, to be yeah. really fast lenses cuz you're shooting outside. Mm-hmm. So they could be like an F4 and above or whatever. You know, that could be really cool. Which mm. would be a little smaller of a lens, yeah. The micro be, lens game. The drone lens. Yeah. Nice. Could you just use like a <coughs> monocle, like the guy from Planters? <laughs> monocle. Slap that on there. The Planters monocle. That would work, right? Yeah. You just put your iPhone on it. It's fine. Good times. Just fine. Um, yeah. We'll see. So yeah, man. I'm excited about that. Uh, Movie-wise, I am excited about, it's already out and I need to go see it, but I'm excited about 10 Cloverfield Lane. I My neighbor saw it and said it was pretty good. Yeah. He felt like the ending was, eh. Really? It yeah. looks really cool to me. I like John Goodman a lot. I think he's he's great. So pretty pumped to see that. And I like the original Cloverfield. I was a big fan. That was an Abrams piece, right? Uh, I believe so. I don't know if he directed it or produced it or what, but yeah, it was good. He produced this one, I think. Speaking of J.J. Abrams, did you see the article about how him and Spielberg want to bring movies right to your living room? No. They want to do a distribution deal where as soon as a movie drops... You can stream it right in your home. It's like a 24-hour code, and I think it's like 150 bucks to to stream it or something crazy, really? or 150 bucks for the year to have the ability to do it, and then 50 bucks a movie. I don't know, something stupid. Interesting. So you and pay a premium to get it right away. I guess, but also I guess you know you got to think there's if you've got four people in your household. Yeah. That's 10 bucks a pop, which you would pay at the theater. Yeah. Interesting. So. Yeah. And to me, I'm just like, you know, unless know you've got like a killer home theater, like literally like it. awesomeness. Yeah. But see, because I like the experience of going to the theater. I like sitting there in this giant screen, crazy good sound system, like nothing like my own sure. system. Not everybody, yeah. some people, when they go to the theater, all they think about is the potential contraction of bed bugs. Yeah. I guess. Or like sitting that, on a, a lot of people, or lice. A lot of people, on a needle or something. A lot of people think that they're going to go to the theater and get come home with lice and bed bugs. I've never. That's heard a real that. concern. I've never heard that at all. Oh yeah, Weird. it's a thing. Adam, nod your head in there. Is that a thing? Adam agrees. As he's scratching his head, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a thing. Like people have people people are grossed out by things like movie theaters and sort of like community seating. Really? Buses and stuff. There's a whole group of people that are like, uh Just carry uh carry some sanitizer <laughs> with you. You're fine. I'm not worried about it. I mean they yeah. got they've got you know, solutions to fix all that just stuff. Just wear a full body condom and carry look, some sanitizer. Look, if I get good. if I get gonorrhea in a movie theater, I mean so be it, right? So be it. You saw the movie, it was fantastic. <laughs> it's all worth it. You know? Uh, Story has been satisfied. Awesome. So anyways, yeah, man. What's that's fun. Uh yeah, but yeah. So 10 Cloverfield Lane, really excited about that one. You know, um, I, um, I'm i excited to to get some more guests on the show. I'm not. I'm we, selfish. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were jamming. Uh, no, we, were, we had some good ones. Yeah, we were jamming early on, or uh, last January, year. January, February. Yeah. January, February this year, we had some killer. I want to get some more people on the show. I want to, you know, I want to get some more brands on the show. I want to hear, you know, what they're developing, what they're uh-huh. up to, and I want to get some more bourbon on the show. Exactly. Yeah. And I want to apologize to our listeners. I have, you know, I've dropped the ball. I've kind of champ been the champion of bringing on the mm-hmm. bourbon distilleries, and it's all you. Um, I, I'm it's sorry. Your fault. I'm sorry, and I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that, and I'm going to bring bourbon back to this show. <laughs> So, make FTB great again. Yeah, I'm gonna make. Gonna I'm gonna make FTB great again. Good, good for you. Yeah. So, anyways. Uh, cool. Yeah. No, we we definitely need to get some more brands because I want to know the inside dirt on the new gear coming out. You know. Yeah. I want to hear those little. Hey, we're, we're not good. supposed to tell you, but we yeah. Got this. And you know what? We may, maybe we need to have our our friends from Video Maker back on. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to have. Maybe there's a couple people we can invite back. Yeah, we could. Because there's been some good shows, and to to bring them back would be nice. Oh yeah, I mean we could go back to wooden camera and say, hey, what do you got coming out? You know, new mm-hmm. red weapon. You got the Ursa Mini. What, what do you got for those cameras? That could be fun. All right, it's a good idea. All right, well, we're gonna be planning some shows for you guys, getting you the yeah. the A one content. 
Um, thanks so much for listening. But I want to let you guys have a little bit of airtime. So uh, strolling through, you guys have been great chatting to us on uh, on Twitter. Um, the tweeter. On the tweeter. And uh, we had one from uh, Ray Rushing, at Ray Rushing. He says, when will this be on the show at FTB Podcast? And evidently, Drake, as in the running musician? through the six with my woes, uh, has now doing a line of whiskey. What? Drake is readying, I guess readying means it's sitting in a barrel, his own line of whiskey. According to Pitchfork.com, Drake teases his line of whiskey. What is it? Virginia Black Whiskey. Why Virginia? Uh, after that legendary moment, what else is there to do but celebrate with class? There's no word on it when it will become commercially available. Uh, but, yeah. Hmm. Drake's Drake's getting in the whiskey game. Interesting. It's going to be 6%. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So, uh, Ray, thanks for uh, for bringing that up. That's pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. Do you think celebrities should just be throwing their hat in the whiskey game? Uh, celebrities throw their hats in lots of games, yeah. especially alcohol. You've got, what, Ciroc. Yeah, Jay-Z's and you've got in the, he's in the, he's in the game. in vodka, and, you, you know. It's yeah. always, like, a lot of the clearer liquors, though. I don't know that I know any celebrities down with the dark stuff. Yeah, you would think that, uh, you know, you think of bourbon or whiskey and you think of like you know I think a country music Zach artist Brown or something. Band. Yeah. I'm a Zach Brown band and I'm drinking my whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the new single from Zach Brown band I'm drinking my whiskey. I'm not sure what his music sound likes, but that that's that's pretty oh, much what I think it sounds like. That's hilarious. I'm a Zach Brown and I'm drinking my song and I'm drinking my whiskey. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, you got a career ahead of you, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what I typically think of as country music. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of fun. Uh, we had uh, our friends over uh, you know, from last week's show. Um, hmm. The the, ga- the cat said uh, Sun Lux in the band. They favorited our- Nice. They favorited a tweet Good. about their video. That's yeah, kind of fun. Because their video is amazing. Um, what else we got people talking about here? Um. I don't know. South by is still going on. Yes. So that's kind of cool. There's, a lot, there's a lot of people that are thanking us for following them. Mm. We like to follow people. If yeah. you want to follow us, follow us at FTB Podcast <laughs> on Twitter yeah. and Instagram. FTB Podcast. And we'll follow you as well. No doubt. Maybe. Maybe. If we like you. So <laughs> that's a great show today, buddy. Yeah, we like, caught we up. Any, uh, we got back to our roots. No listener mail or anything. You know what? Any Not as many people. I feel like I Nobody think what to talk. I think what has happened is people have just embraced Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and that's really where the activity happens. So, I. Not as many people are um, jumping into Sending like directs. an ask me anything or whatever. Yeah. It's usually like, hey, I'm if I gotta say something, I'm just gonna shout out on on social media, Twitter, Instagram. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Her. Well. So cheers to all of you out there enjoying a nice whiskey with us on this St. Patrick's Day. Catching yeah. up. Old times. Today today felt a little bit like episode one. It was. Just me and you. It's hanging out. Chilling. Nothing crazy talking, going on. Catching up. Recap. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, I guess until next time. Cheers. Cheers. This podcast was recorded live at Sound Images Studio. Find out more at soundimages.com.